um, end of my my service, I I quit it because um, well then we had a good debate about this whole conscription system and militarist uh, sort of upbringing that it it uh, involves. So I quit five months prematurely, and then I was put into into jail for two and a half months. So I became sort of peace peace activist and uh, satyagrahi <laughs> in in a way uh, when I was about twenty. Then when I went to serve this two and a half month sentence in a, I mean not a not a very strict prison in a sort of op- open one, and then Thomas Valgren, my activist philosopher friend, gave me gun his hints Varaj as a accompanying reader <laughs> to prison. So and then I then I then got got sort of to the source uh, of of this uh, Gandhi and Satyagraha and Ahimsa. We for a number of years discussed with this uh, this sort of group that had had st- established this Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam uh, network that that would be important thing to do to have a Finnish translation of Hind Swaraj and then we went sort of normal route seeking grants and looking for professional translators and that didn't work out and then some friends in Sweden said that we should organize something for the Salt March 75 anniversary, 75 years anniversary. And then we got this idea that, well, let's make this uh, crowd sourcing. That, that name was not there, but let's invite uh, people to come and translate one page each. And and we did it. And, and very, very soon we got more than 100 uh, volunteers that the democracy is the best antidote to to globalization and the problems uh, related to it but then it has to be deep and comprehensive so all aspects of life politics culture economy social justice and so on and so that was would have a kutumbagam framework then translated into comprehensive democracy or some purna swaraj um sort of intervention and and that's under a banner with which we have done lots of things especially in the in the social forum context already then in hyderabad and mumbai there was there was a clear critique of of gandhi from the dalit movements and then there's been more more you know from sort of anti racist um, angles and feminist angles and so on So Gandhi is not, not in that way obvious uh, sort of foundation for for making this kind of inclusive intersectional politics today. But at the same time, we think think in Gandhi this this civilizational critique is so unique and and powerful that it it needs to be on on the map. But the way we framed the Gandhi-related programs were like engagements with Gandhi, so not not. Um, You know, having a saintly uh, rituals <laughs> or these hagiographic uh, events, but then really look uh, critically and together what is it in in his his work and his thinking that uh, is still very relevant and in a way absolutely necessary today. Yeah, I think for the. For the environmental movement, the, and especially the, for the sort of civil disobedience that now we are again surfacing in the ex- extinction extinction rebellion, the Gandhi has played a very very direct role. That some uh, Nordic Scandinavian friends of mine they have sort of tracked how all the, this started in Europe. And it's the the Norwegian eco philosophers and peace researchers Johan Galtung and Arne Nes that they actually came to India in '69 for the Gandhiji's um, was it 100 yes centenary anniversary? correct centenary and um, and and they toured the ashrams and really got got deep into the, the Gandhian tradition on the site. And then when they ga- came back, there was Norway was building hydropower like anything, like all rivers <laughs> were were to be dammed. So so they were part and they sort of organized these civil disobedience actions against um, this dam building. So early 70s, the first, uh, so what, what we can call eco satyagraha, were were fought and from in Norway and then 
you know, Sweden, Finland, so many other European countries, the humanity really stepped into new new age and new territory when the nuclear bomb was developed and and, and used. Um, so, so if so, this kind of wisdom we really need to have to roll back knowledge and roll back technology that is is uh, destructive. That would be a very obvious thing to do. And I think non-violence. One thing is this idea of dialogue. That that if we, you know, when we are against fascism, then it will not take us very far if we just say that this is bad. This is bad. These people are, you know, on a wrong track. But through through dialogue, uh, you know, try to get a sense that what what drives this kind of xenophobic, um, extremist, violent um, leaning uh, thinking. And and then you know have faith in this kind of uh, this uh, you know searching for the truth truth even with the with what looks looks like looks the uh, adversary. So I think that's one clear clear lesson for for sort of uh, us. <laughs>